Hi everyone and welcome to the Curious Geographer Live. Um, super exciting that we've got this fantastic lineup and today we're actually doing something um, a bit different, it's a bit um, interactive as well so we're going to be learning something new. Um, so um, today we are going to be joined by Adam Corsini who is the Public Engagement Officer at Layers of London. Now Layers of London is an amazing map-based history website which has been developed, developed by the Institute of Historical Research. However, it is so useful for geographers for understanding place. So you can access free historic maps um, on the website and you can understand how places have changed over time. We can use it as geographers, particularly if you're studying A-level for the A-level Changing Places unit. And in Changing Places, we really look at the different layers that make a place and how places change over time. Um, and also if you're um, for GCSE, it links to the urbanization units. And it's also a fantastic tool for NEAs as well. So if you are doing your NEA, your independent investigation, this is a free website that can you can use so much amazing qualitative secondary data and you can use it in your actual project as well by researching the different layers. Um, if you are new to my channel, do not forget to hit subscribe so we um, so you can get more updates on what's happening on the Curious Geographer. And so now we are going to get Adam. So um, Adam, welcome to the Curious Geographer. If you could just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure, hi Ellie and hi everyone. Uh, my name's Adam Corsini and as Ellie was saying, I work on the Layers of London project. My role is public engagement officer. So I have the fantastic job of being able to share not only the historical maps that we have on our site, and the data sets, but also encourage people to explore their own areas and to contribute to our website by sharing their own histories and interests and own memories. And um, and hopefully during this uh, interview today, I'll be able to uh, show you what the site's about and we can explore areas that you want to explore. If, if anybody does want to explore anything, feel free to leave a, a street address or an area in the comments and uh, we can have a little look at that area and I can show you a bit more because um, that's basically my job as public engagement officer and I, it's what I love doing. <laughs> Yeah, super. So if there is somewhere you do want to research, so um, different areas in London and see how they're changed, then please do um, put that in the comments on the side. Um, so Adam, what exactly is Layers of London? Well, it's, um, it's two things really. It's a, a website that has gathered together historical maps and uh, different data sets from different institutions and organisations, from large ones like the British Library, the National Archives, um, Nash, uh, London Metropolitan Archives, but also local libraries and local administrative archives. So for places such as uh, um, Bromley, um, I think Lewisham, I think there's Islington, there's Hackney, those local borough archives have supplied historical maps. And what we've done is we've taken them all together and layered them all up so people can explore the history of one particular place. Um, in fact, rather than me explain it, if I'm able to share the screen, it might even might be easier to actually show you what I'm talking about. And um, can we see the screen now? Yeah. So, so Layers of London, it's a completely free site. It's layersofLondon.org. And when you click on that and go to the site, this is the home page. And... To get into the map resource, you simply click on map or get started here. I'll click on map. And this getting started page really explains what the project's all about. It's a series of layers um, that works on OpenStreetMap on the right hand side. And then there's also collections and records which are usually generated. So members of the public have put up their own interests. So there's a collection of Punk London here, Black History Month, a collection was made for that. We have collections of pubs, um, local history, all sorts. And they're, they're represented in a similar way to Google Maps by pins on this base map. But I think for today, because this is a curious geographer, um, we'll, we'll have a look at some of the layers instead. So what I can do by going to my layer tools button down here on the bottom left hand side is I can hide those records and then choose new layers. And this is where 
the site really comes into its own because we have maps going right back to medieval London here. We have Tudor map. We have maps that were made throughout the 17th century and they go right up to um, modern day uh, with Victorian maps like the Booth Poverty, the Ordnance Survey maps and um, one of our most popular is this bomb damage map here from uh, 1945. So if I maybe I, shall I upload a layer now and, uh, and we can take a take a little look at what it's all about. I might start with this one which is the RAF aerial collection um, which is a layer that we uh, created ourselves, or I'll say ourselves, in fact members of the public helped us create this layer and if I move this over here you can hopefully see that it covers the whole of Greater London and as I start to zoom in you might be able to see that these are a whole series of images that were taken by the RAF after World War II and what we've done using the process of geo-referencing which is basically a process where you take um, one image and in this case a photograph and identify spots or places on that image with places on today's current map and then it superimposes the two over each other so if I if I go to somewhere like um, let's go down here to the River Thames what we're looking at here is a view of London, pretty much a Google Earth image of London from 1945 to 1949. I'll wait for it to uh, find itself. And then if I go to my layer tools over here, what I can do is I can start to fade that layer in and out. So you can see where the area around uh, the Victoria docks here, how that looked in 1945 and we can fade those in and out to really see the changes that have been taken place in a particular area. So if I was to search for uh, a street or a postcode or a place, uh, and like I said earlier, if anybody wants me to uh, do so and wants to suggest a place, we can we can go to that place and, uh, and have a little look around. So really the project's about these different layers that can be um, uploaded to the base map, and you can fade them in and out. You can explore how areas have changed throughout time, um, going right back to the medieval London map uh, relating to the city of London. And in addition to that, we also have data sets, which um, again are a huge range of stuff from the environment to um, transport networks, archeology. span uh, We've even got London's worst disasters here. And this cool layer, which is, um, a series of locations in Dickens novels. So it covers quite a lot of different subjects. Brilliant, just making sure I wasn't on mute there like I've done um, before. Um, that is just fantastic. There's like so many things. And what I was gonna say is how, and this is kind of where we can talk together because it's obviously a uh, history-based site, but geographers can use it and geographers can use it so well. So. For understanding place like what um well a few things that were really interesting one is that actually it's like an interactive website where when you showed us the RAF um photos the general public actually added those photos on um which I think was so fantastic so for example if you know the area you got to contribute to creating their own map so and I think is that just to confirm is that does that still happen when you have other um, resources like will that be something in the future if someone wanted to contribute to your website or is that just a kind of one-off thing so that was a for us that was a, a one-off project um, but there's a whole website called georeferencer.com which has similar sort of projects where you can georeference a whole range of maps in fact the British Library has a whole web uh, sort of subsection of their website dedicated to that where you can um, geo-reference old maps uh, to modern day maps so you can build up this whole archive and collection of, of different data. But you're absolutely right, Ellie, this, this particular one here was all made with the help of the general public. So there was something like 8,000 individual images 
which have been geo-referenced by uh, well, a whole range of people, hundreds of people. And, and further to what you were saying earlier about understanding place, um, I was thinking maybe if I, hopefully people can see this find a place bar at the top. If I search for something like um, Stratford, and if we head over to the area of the Olympic Park, oops, let me, I'll just switch off this, this layer for the moment. Oops. And where are we? I've gone to Stratford Marsh. I've gone to the wrong Stratford, maybe. <laughs> it's always fun doing it live. Let me, uh, let me just search for this one instead. Yeah, yeah we're all right. Where's the Olympic Park? Here we go. So the Olympic Stadium being here, if we wanted to see what that was like um, in 1945, we can switch on that map and we can see it's completely different. I mean, there's hardly anything around here. There's lots of um, factories and um, a few of the canal systems exist. But what these, what this website allows you to do is to take a look at some of the historical maps and start thinking about the regeneration of London, how places have changed. Um, and I mentioned that you can upload several layers. So if I if I choose another one, I might go for this uh, booth map here. I'll click on done. And if I turn this one off, we can see the area of Victoria Park. And this booth map was made in the late Victorian period, and it really was made to try and depict the different levels of wealth in society and how in a lot of areas you had um, wealthy people and poor people living side by side, in some respects similar to today. And this area around Hackney, um, this colour coding shows you how the red houses were sort of middle class and quite comfortable, but then the blue buildings and uh, if there's some that are uh, this dark blue down here, they were of real low, poor class. And in fact, some of them were even deemed criminal. Um, but they sit pretty much side by side. Uh, so this is one way that maps can start to give an insight into the way people lived and the different um, areas and, and how those have changed over time. Brilliant. And I think that's what is just so interesting. So using those different maps and in here, you've got the example of Stratford. So Stratford is a case study which is used by so many geographers. So GCSE and A-level. And I know I take A-level fieldwork there as well. But even for GCSE, they learn about how it's been regenerated and what the impact of that is. So I just think this is a really great tool where you can go back through time and look at that area as well and like geographically how things change over space. Um, again, that Charles Booth, Booth poverty, poverty map, um, using that to understand changing places. So um, when we used it at school, we looked at Deptford High Street, which had went through a massive area of decline, but in the Charles Booth poverty map, it showed that actually it was a really kind of well-to-do area and it was described as the Oxford Street of London. Um, oh yeah, you're just searching it here. I, I, just, <laughs> um, I can't just go. To... <laughs> and I just think that it's just very interesting to like to compare the different areas, um, which is really fantastic. I do have a request. Um, if you could please search West Norwood. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a request from the comments, which would be fantastic. Sure, let's go. Let's go to that spot. I mean, one thing I should say is that um, not every area in London is covered by every single map. So unfortunately, West North Norwood is just missed by this Booth Poverty map. However, don't worry, what we can do, I can, uh, I can turn on that RAF one again briefly to show you what the area would be like. Um, with my layer tool section over here, I can minimise that to see the map in more detail as well. And what I might do is upload one further layer. Um, if I go to, uh, I can go to this section to go to layers as well. Let me try uploading the OS map from the 1940s to 60s and maybe this bomb damage map as well 
in my layer tools, I'll, I'll remove this aerial photography collection for now and maybe this booth map. And now what we can see here is the 1945 bomb damage map. So um, this is, I have to admit, I'm not 100% familiar with West Norwood, um, but hopefully I'm showing you areas that you do recognize if you do come from that area. So this area of Chest uh, Chestnut Road down here, um, you can see that this particular road had a range of Diff, uh, a range of bombs that dropped on the area. So the lighter houses, they were less devastated than the houses that have been coloured in as um, black and purple and pink here. Um, and it's interesting to see these circles as well, if I just move a bit further east. These circles are where V1 and V2 bombs dropped. So sometimes uh, it comes as no surprise that in the centre of that circle, these houses are completely blown away and, and devastated. And what I really like about the bomb damage map is that often if you then walk down this street today, you can see how the, the blitz and the war had such an effect on the built environment because I'm, I'm willing to take a bet that these houses, and I'll, I'll have a look at Chatsworth Way here, these houses that have been coloured in purple, undoubtedly there's probably a new build of new houses or new flats there now because the bombs meant that those houses had to be taken away. So sometimes when you're walking down streets and you might notice that the architecture changes as you walk further down the street, there might be a run of terraces and then a completely new run and then the old set of terraces as they were uh, when originally built. That's often because of World War II and this bomb damage map sometimes gives us clues as to why those new buildings have been put up. Brilliant. And I think what's really interesting, when we're really, as geographers, looking at places, we often look at the external factors which change a place. And that's particularly a focus for A-level geographers as well. So what has happened to change the characteristics of that place, whether that is economic characteristics, such as bomb damage is obviously going to change the economy of an area if there's been um, decline. Um, and then also... Um, we also look at people and how migration has particularly changed areas as well. And I think you're just about to release a new project, is that right? Which can maybe illustrate how migration is changing, area, well, how migration influenced areas of London. Indeed we are. Um, and uh, this this is officially launched next week, but I might, uh, I might have a sneak preview for you guys just now. <laughs> um, let me go back to my, uh, my layer directory and... If I go to um, this data set layer, what we, um, what we will be releasing uh, officially next week is this Windrush arrival layer, which if I click on it and use this one, just remove the bomb damage and the OS map for now. Um, because if I zoom out, we should see a whole series of circles. And this data set is telling us where the passengers on Windrush ended up in London, where they were um, their um, designated uh, accommodation. So um, if I turn off, let me just turn off ooh, that layer, but turn on this one. Um, so if we if we go back to the area in South London, West, West Norwood, we can see that there's a series of rings here. And if I click on one of those, up pops this information panel. So this is about Rosemary Fielding, who was number 151 on, on the ship. Um, she was only 18 when she arrived. And we have her occupation, and we have the um, last place, or the place that she came from, which was uh, Kingston, Jamaica in this case. And then she um, then moved into 39 Chestnut Road. So what the, uh, I think all these rings around here, they all moved into 39 Chestnut Road, a whole series of uh, five different passengers here. Um, I won't click on it now, but if you do want to have a look at this layer, uh, you can also click on this link, which takes you to a PDF of the landing card. And all this data has come from Goldsmiths University, uh, which has the, the original data and, um, and all this information is on their website. 
there's just such so many different layers which I think that's the one thing that I was really amazed with when I first went on the website was and from all the years and what's actually some of the earliest maps that you have on there um so let me show you if I go back to London maps we have this um medieval London layer I'll just take up to the top of it uh, so both the medieval London and the Tudor map were made by um, uh, Historic Town Atlas, which um, are an organisation that gathered together historical written sources and archaeological data. And then they create these new modern day maps of what medieval London and Tudor London would look like. Um, so I can I'll click on that and I'll, I'll say use this layer. But I'll also do this Agus map which is from uh, either 1561 or 1633. And if I use, that's a, an original etching of London. And if I upload both of those, I'll take off. Uh, both of these only relate to the city of London, because during those periods, London was obviously much smaller. But if we zoom in, we can see how even with these old maps, we've tried to, as best we can, still geo-reference them. So if I zoom into St. Paul's here, um, if I then, I'll just turn off the medieval layer for a moment, but if I fade that map out, you should see that it's on top of the open street map today where St. Paul's churchyard is. And then likewise, if I turn on that medieval layer now, and I can move these layers around as well. So I'll put the medieval layer on top. We can see how this modern day map of medieval London has been produced. And again, we've geo-referenced that as best as we can to the modern day map. So in terms of how historical um, a website is, it does go right back to 1270 in terms of physical maps like this. But then if we start looking at our data sets, and I may not bring this one up, but I'll just bring up the summary page. When we look at the archaeology of Greater London, we go right back to prehistory and Paleolithic times. And so there's information relating to find spots where they found objects from the distant, distant past. And then also things like uh, Roman infrastructure, medieval infrastructure, um, both in terms of roads, buildings and find spots. So there's a huge, huge range of information that's available on the website. Yeah, so much information. I think that's really important to remember as well, that actually, if we're looking at the outer areas of London, many of them were kind of technically the countryside as well. They weren't actually joined to the, the London town part, um, kind of like Peckham and Camberwell, you had to go in by um, horse and cart to get into the centre. And even that, if you're looking at how a place has changed over, say, 200 years, which is a very common time which geographers do, there shows a lot of change as well and those maps maps maybe if they're, even if they're not on the map can kind of illustrate that actually it was we weren't part of the city really in fact there's a really good um, it might be worth mentioning quickly i'll show you a really good layer which is um john roke's 10 mile round map which does exactly what you were just saying actually so if i just upload that quickly we don't need to go into detail with it but if i zoom out um, it will show you how around the city of London there's this huge density of a population and then you get all these villages um, on the outskirts. Um, but in between, it's just a whole series of fields. Uh, so uh, seeing that we've got West Norwood still in our dot here, um, we can see some buildings which may still exist today and some of the road networks, but they're surrounded, all these little hamlets and villages are surrounded by a whole field network. So this, if, um, if you are studying uh, the history of a place or, or how geographically places have been influenced by the past, uh, this, I really recommend this John Roke's London 10 mile round map. It has really good coverage of London and it's a really good indication of how old field networks and field boundaries have, in many cases, influenced the road networks of today and how different new villages or, or more relatively modern places have, uh, have become what they are. Super, and what date is that map from? So this map is from 1746, so from the 18th century. 
Brilliant. So you can really see, yeah, how London has changed. And I really like it that it's, it's just got the fields marked on there as well. Um, I'm just going to say, if there are any questions, and we've already got some, I put a comment down earlier, please write them down and then we'll ask Adam. And then for me as well, as geographers, we are always have to be a bit critical of our resources and evaluative on how like useful they are. Um, what are the disadvantages or limitations if we were using maps to investigate place? Well, I think one of the most important thing to remember is that maps are always made by someone with some sort of agenda. So there are going to be things that um, aren't going to appear on, on these maps. And if we take this current one that we've got up, you can see that um, when you get into the city, although there are more buildings there, and if I zoom in, the detail on those street names and buildings are, are much more evident than when you start going out into the outskirts of London. And and the way the buildings have been depicted, um, again, has much more detail than if we were to say, if I zoom out again, if we go up to um, North London this time, and the area around um, Islington and Upper Street, this is... Um, near Angel on the Northern Line today. Um, those buildings, there isn't as much detail and sometimes they're just depicted as these these black bobs, blobs. So you don't really know whether that's um, a, a manor house or a series of um, farmsteads or public houses or, or whatever they are. So sometimes the older maps don't have as much detail. And um, if I just bring up the, let's bring up the Tudor map this time. Um, it, we recently had a talk from the guy who made this Tudor map and he admitted that, um, oops, let's find it, the, they did have to be a bit selective as to what buildings they did depict here um, and also the colour coding of it. Uh, but he said a really interesting and cool thing which was that any map that's made should try and be as, as user friendly as possible and should explain itself without the need to have words on there, which I thought was a really interesting aspect to look at. So if we were to erase all these words here, um, after a while, it, if you studied it carefully, it probably would become apparent where the churches are, where the the big, um, the, the guilds were and the halls here, and the different types of buildings that start to come around. And things like rivers, uh, greens, gardens, they're obvious things, the colour green and blue. So it's sort of things like that, which um, which are useful. Brilliant. And you've just showed us so many maps. I really think that if you are studying geography or interested in it, I just, just go on the website and just have a play. There's so many different layers that you can try. You can layer them on top of each other. You can make them more transparent, as you showed us before. Um, is there some, it's, it's really user-friendly also, which I really like as well. But if someone was looking to have a go at themselves, um, is there any advice you'd give kind of straight away on just how to use the website? Yeah, I think um, we have tried to make it as simple as possible. Maybe if I just quickly go back to the homepage, um, I started by clicking on map here, but in truth, if you actually click on get started, what should come up is this layer directory straight away. So from here, um, simply have a little look at the different types of layers and maps we have. If you want to really look at a local area, you can go to borough maps and then pick a specific area. So for instance, if I go to, um, let's go for Hackney, um, the uh, the only thing that comes up here are the maps that um, cover that area, cover that borough. So that kind of refines your search off the off the go, really. Um, and then I'd also recommend this data sets category, which has this huge, really detailed amount of information. And just because they're separated here doesn't mean that you can't upload a data set and a London map at the same time. So, for instance, if we wanted to quickly upload London's worst of disasters, if I can say it, London's worst disasters, you can read a little bit about it. You click on use this layer, which hopefully you can see. If you can't, it's in the bottom right. And um, and if I click on London maps, and I'll go for uh, this medieval London map again. And then in the bottom right-hand corner, 
and there's a green button that says I'm done. And once you click on that, um, the the map comes up and you can zoom in and out. Um, what I just quickly did there was minimize this tray which has all those records on. And I recommend doing that if you're using this site more for geography, um, where you can just minimize the tray of records and in your layer tools down here, hide those records. Um, if you're using this for a mixture of geography and history or more history based, then I would recommend having this tray open because then you can start reading about what things and what aspects of history members of the public have put up. And again, I'll show those records because then you can click on one of these pins and it might have some historical photographs. And if I just open up that record here, this is a record relating to um, the Hearts Hospital in, I think, North London. So it's a mixture of geography and history. Um, and in some respects, it can tie into all different aspects of the curriculum. Um, so, for instance, at the moment, we've just launched a project, which is a book club, where we're sending out books to um, interested people that all are locate all have locations in London and we're asking people to read those books and then map and create these records for each of the locations that are mentioned in the book so that will then be a collection that you can explore on layers of London uh, and that's another way where we can bring different topics and different subjects all together under this one resource wow that sounds so that sounds fantastic and what's really cool is you do get the general public to like support and contribute so if someone is really interested in mapping then they can definitely get involved um i do have a question from um harriet and then we're probably going to ask about careers as well um harriet's asked and this kind of links to exactly what you're just talking about are there any map layers that show perceptions of place or opinions so the Booth Poverty Map, to some extent, shows someone's opinion because although it was meant to be a scientific project, it, in some respects it was a little bit biased. So um, there's this story of, uh, for some of the streets, in terms of the colour coding, uh, Booth and his team used to walk down it and if he saw that there was a window broken, he would classify that as a poorer area than if there was... A uh, street that had lots of beautiful window boxes and people in top hats coming out, that kind of thing. So sometimes those biased opinions go into what makes the map. But I think in real answer to your question, um, rather than just using the site for the historical maps, if I open up this tray again, um, here you can get people's a whole range of collections which people have put together and. Um, it's worth having a little explore here because there are some really interesting ones which have a whole range um, of different um, different uh, demographics in society, different types of local history. Um, this one here is relating to Christmas in London. We've got Jewish London here. There's a fantastic collection which someone put together which was... Um, uh, early histories of black Londoners that came uh, to uh, that settled in London and uh, the role they played in the city. Um, there's there's a whole range of things to explore, really. So so not only can you explore these, but I should also say that if you've got a particular thing that you feel should be mapped, you can do your re your own research and then start creating those records and collections because. Um, your own interests are equally as relevant and as important as anyone else's and the more information we have on the site the richer a resource it is and the better the site becomes so so please do consider adding content and it's all completely free and um, you just need to create a free account which you can do from the home page um, and that's that's really simple to do you can do it in less than less than a minute Great. And because people are contributing, it keeps changing as well. So there might be new map layers. And as you said, the Windrush migration layer is coming officially like next um, on Monday, um, which is very exciting as well. Um, unless there's any other questions um, for people to write down in the comments, we have been asking, um, so if you do have a question, please write it down. Um, we've been asking all our guests, how did they get into careers? So a lot of our listeners might um, be kind of finishing school or talking about careers as well. Um, so I know that like Les of London is a history um, website, but how did you get into doing what you're doing? 
So I did actually come from the history angle. Um, I was really interested in the distant past and I studied archaeology um, at school and then university. And that really that led me on to um, I was really fortunate to have a career in museums. Um, I admittedly I did a lot of volunteering beforehand. That's always a good way to not only contribute to different places, but also help you yourself understand whether you like that career choice and that career path. Um, and and then from the museum world, um, I, I sort of fell into Layers of London last year, which um, has been absolutely fantastic and opened my eyes to a lot of aspects of history that I wasn't even aware of. So, uh, so that, that was really my route. Brilliant. Well, thank you so, so much for coming on The Curious Geographer. Um, you've really shown us so much on the website and I definitely feel that it's so much for people to explore, particularly when we're looking at places. So um, even just like looking at the area, how, what maps people have created, um, the different layers and how they've changed over time and they could just keep layering them up as well. Um, and as I said, like it's really, really good if you are doing your NEA project, then it can be used for um, looking at kind of Stratford and how the Olympic Park has changed, but also just investigating your local place. That's if you go to a London school, but I know many of you anyway, if you don't go to a London school, might know different areas in London. So you can definitely research that as well. So a massive thank you from all of us uh, here, kind of watching and everything, and great to do some kind of cross uh, curricula. So combining with history. So thank you very much for coming on. Thank you, it's a real pleasure. And then just for next week, um, so next week, everybody, we are joined by Dr. Kelman. Dr. Kelman has just written the book Disaster by Choice. So links with um, tectonics and well, all hazards, really. And we're going to be looking at what makes a disaster and how is a disaster basically influenced by human action? So why are humans vulnerable two disasters so it will be really really interesting if you haven't read the book and you are interested it's it's a really quick short read and very very informative so please grab a copy of that and that will be next week at 3 p.m if you haven't already don't forget to hit subscribe and um, share this with anybody else have a nice rest of your day and have a nice weekend as well <laughs>